Ericsson, proud sponsors of the Nobel Prize series. renowned poet and a writer of international stature, Thomas Tronströmer. In a career spanning over 55 years, Thomas Tronströmer has written over 15 collections of poetry and his work has been translated into more than 60 languages. Fantastic to feel how my poem grows, why I myself shrink. It grows, it takes my place, it pushes me aside, it throws me out of the nest. The poem is ready. Today, at the age of 80, Tranströmer lives in Stockholm with his wife, Monica. 20 years ago, Tranströmer suffered a stroke, which has left him with difficulties in speaking. Monica now speaks on his behalf. I was gift for very many years, I was 53 years old. We met when I was 17 years old, when we met in 1919, when we met when we were younger. Vi har bott utanför Stockholm i väldigt ja. många år. Det har vi faktiskt gjort. Mm. Mm. Och nu har vi återvänt till Stockholm där vi båda är uppfödda. Mycket bra. Det känns skönt. Ja. Ja. She describes their reaction to hearing that her husband had become a Nobel laureate. We were surprised. Were we shocked? No, we are too old to be, be that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Swedish actor Christer Henriksson has been a fan of the poet's work for many years. It's fantastic. I cried. Yeah, I did. Other admirers of Tranströmer's poetry, such as poet and Nobel laureate Seamus Heaney, believe that international recognition is long overdue. I was utterly delighted when I heard Thomas Tranströmer had won the Nobel Prize. Um, everybody was hoping for that for years. Thomas Tronströmer was only 23 when he published his first collection in 1954. In an interview from 30 years ago, Tronströmer talked about his early work. When I started to write about my first book, it has very little for me. It's a book written by a skriven of an av en mycket ung människa som inte har erfarit så förskräckligt mycket av yttre händelser utan det man har erfarit är mest eh, sin egen värld så att säga. Så för verket handlar den ju om mig <laughs> väldigt mycket. Despite this early success, Tronströmer pursued other careers in parallel with his life as a poet. For many years he worked as a psychologist. Maybe what makes him a poet makes him a psychologist, rather than the other way around, you know? Because uh, he's dealing with the, that which is fleeting and at the same time completely real. Moments which have some kind of uncanny power. Nature and sensibility about his natural environment have been a central element of his poetry. The small island of Rune Mara in the Stockholm archipelago has been a major inspiration. 
Tranströmer's grandfather owned a house there, and it's where Tranströmer spent the long summers of his childhood. Du var ofta åkt i Rönnmärö när du ville skriva. Du har arbetat bra skrivit där. Tagit mycket promenader och fått goda idéer ute på ön. Och fortfarande känns det väl när vi kommer dit ut att det, det, det här är den plats där du verkligen känner dig hemma. Mm. After Tranströmers illness 20 years ago at the age of 59 it was hoped that with time his speech would return. After it became apparent that Tranströmer would never recover completely he turned even more to the music that has been as great a love for him as his poetry. Mary and myself once sat in Thomas's living room and he played music because he couldn't talk to us. And there was some kind of transmission tremble. The music and the silence, Thomas uh, entranced in that uh, work, herself sitting silently. Whatever that mood in that room was, says something about the kind of transmission uh, Thomas's poetry achieves. I, I read Tranströmer every day, waiting for the bus in the intermission when I play on the theater, because he's so, in a way, so simple to understand. And also, when you get to know him, very complicated. A poem called Alone, written in 1966, is one of Henriksson's favorites. Här var jag nära att omkomma en kväll i februari. Bilen gled sidledes på halkan, ut på fel sida av vägen. De mötande bilarna, deras lyktor, kom nära. Mitt namn, mina flickor, mitt jobb lösgjorde sig och blev kvar tyst bakom, allt längre bort. Jag var anonym som en pojke på en skolgård, omgiven av fiender. Mötande trafik hade väldiga ljus. De lyste på mig medan jag styrde och styrde i en genomskinlig skräck som flöt som äckvita. Sekunderna växte, man fick grunder. De blev stora som sjukhusbyggnader. Först när du read the poem, you you understand it, it has a kind of meaning for you. Then you read it once more, then you read it once more. And suddenly, uh, the poem uh, becomes different. You see a new context in it. Because first you see the surface, and you think you understand the poem. And then, then uh, suddenly, you, you, you get beyond the surface, and you see the whole depth in it. Man kunde nästan stanna upp och andas ut en stund innan man krossades. Då uppstod ett fäste, ett hjälpande sandkorn eller en underbar vindstöd. Bilen kom loss och krälade snabbt tvärs över vägen. En stolpe sköt upp och knäcktes. En skarp klang. Den flög bort i mörkret. Tills det blev stilla. Jag satt kvar i selen och såg hur någon kom genom snöyran för att se vad det blev av mig. He has a way of conjuring that in betweenness. And I think that's what makes him so available as a poet in other languages. It's not that his words are simple, it's that his subject matter makes him and makes you as a reader feel like uh, what William Wordsworth once said, an inmate of this active universe. And that's what uh, Thomas, his poetry, is about, about himself, as uh, in the active between the sky and the earth, between the earth and the deep, uh, between the horizon and here. And that's in a sense what he's after. His words as a poet are wonderful, 
but they're pointing slightly beyond words. When it comes to world literature, anthologies of world literature, Thomas Transtumer would be there in a hundred years' time. Proud sponsors of the Nobel Prize Series.